I love Jesus, don't you? I'm so glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I was thinking over the weekend, and the Lord's been dealing with me all weekend about relationships. And I chose to sing this song we're getting ready to sing because before we can go on in any relationship we have in our life, we have to put the Lord where He needs to be. He has to be high and lifted up and first in our life. You know, every one of our relationships struggle. If we don't have our relationship right with God, our other relationships become chaotic. If we don't have God where He needs to be in our life, our other relationships are strained. If we can just get God back in the center of our life, if we can get God back in the center of our marriage, if we can get God in the center of our home again, we can save our relationships. We can move forward with Christ together in unity. Yes. But we have to get God where He needs to be in our lives. God's yes. been dealing with me this weekend, and I've got to do it in my own life. I can say this week, and I'll be truthful and honest and open with you guys. This week, I haven't prayed like I always pray. I prayed every day, but I didn't do it like I always do as fervently as I always did. And by the end of the week, I felt myself far away from God. But I was somewhere last night listening to somebody sing, and they testified at this point. They said, it don't matter how far you are from God or if you're as close as you should be with God. He still loves you the same. And I'm so glad for a God like that. Yes. It don't matter if you're 10 miles from him. He still beckons, come home, son. Come home, daughter. If we can yes. just get God where he needs to be. Let's sing. Hallelujah. <laughs>
only ten verses. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 2. And this is Ezekiel speaking. And he said unto me, God said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. That's the phrase there I'm going to focus on, but I want, you to, I want to read what else happens here. Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered unto me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a, a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they, they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall, know, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou doest dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me. And it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. I want to speak to you on the, this morning. Stand up. Stand up, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, as always, I need your help to bring forth your word as you would have me to bring it forth, Lord. I need the anointing of your spirit to rest on me today. Lord, I need every ear in this house to hear what I have to say, Father, Lord. What you have to say through me, Lord. Lord, may I be a vessel. May I not get in the way of anything you want to do in this house, Lord. But may I be used of you and obedient to you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. In the first wave of Israelite captives that were taken by the Babylonian army was four familiar names that most of us know from children's church. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But there was a second wave that came a few years later where 10,000 Israelites were led into captivity. And amongst them was a young 25-year-old man from a priestly family who after five years in captivity at around the age 30, he received a call from God. Now that's interesting because at the age 30 is when he would have became a priest. And now he's in captivity because the Babylonians have taken him. And now God calls him at the age of 30, not to be a priest, but to be a prophet. God gives him words to share with the people. Before I go on and tell you more about Ezekiel, let's first look at why the Israelites were put into captivity. Israel was in captivity because of the sinfulness displayed amongst his people. And they're turning away from the things of God. We know this, for as we read 3 and 4, he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day, for they are impudent children and stiff-hearted, stubborn. They don't want to do things my way, they want to do things their own way. Deuteronomy 28 God gave them instructions. He says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, and thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues in 
and of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou would not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass, and as the Lord rejoiced over to you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked up, plucked from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall shatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Now Israel begins to serve other gods. And we continually talk about how Israel turned to God and then they turned their backs on God and began to serve other gods. And then God had to punish them. And then they would come back to God. And it was this continual uh, uh, roller coaster ride of the Israelites of, of being up and then being down. And being up and then being down. And it's easy to criticize the Israelites. But as we look at our own nation, we see the same thing happening over and over again. God will send revival to our nation. And we can go back and talk about uh, the preachers that have gone before and, and, and that have preached and have, have sent revival to our nation. One of the most recent ones, uh, whether you, you like everything he preached or taught, Billy Graham led a lot of people to the Lord. And we saw millions come to know Jesus. And then we, we, we see now a, a, a digression in in the morals of, of this nation. I'm not saying it's just because of that preacher, but I'm telling you God will send men and women of God to, send, to, to, to be used as a vessel for revival to come to His people. And then after the revival is over, it seems that the people just go back to the same old way. Scripture tells us that not only were they serving other gods, but in Ezekiel 7, verse 22 and 23, it tells us that they were a violent people. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. For the robber shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. We don't have to look far in our nation. You don't have to look at the news long to see all the rioting and the looting that is going on across our nation, the violence that just happened this weekend on Friday night, seven people were shot down, were shot in downtown uh, Milwaukee as several people began just a just a, a gunfight in the middle of the streets there in downtown Milwaukee. Yesterday, 13 people were shot in a supermarket. People just going to get groceries. And 13 people were shot and 10 died at a supermarket in New York. I don't have to go through everything that's happened in the last four or five years. I can just tell you about what's happened in the last week. What's happened in the last two years. 2021, there were 797 murders in Chicago alone. And let us not forget, while we're talking about murder, the thousands of people across the nation that are up in arms right now about their right to murder babies taken away. We hear of wars and rumors of wars. Just this past Wednesday, there was a 4.2 earthquake that struck near Yellowstone National Park. If you know anything about Yellowstone, you know there's a super volcano under that. And it wouldn't take much for a decent sized earthquake to erupt that thing. And it would cover half of the nation with ash. Just this past week, you could go on the McDonald's app and buy a medium fry and have a chance at a tarot card reading as McDonald's will sell you witchcraft along with your fries. Disney is openly admitting to trying to mold the minds of children with the homosexual transgender agenda. Rockingham County Schools has openly admitted this past week of not notifying parents if their child wants to be called a name opposite of their gender. Tonight there will be a lunar eclipse causing a blood moon that will be fully visible in the United States 
Mexico and South America. And I'm not going to get into all that, but we've seen the trend in the past of wherever it was physically visible, that's where there's going to be something that would happen that would rock the world. Or at least get everybody's attention. Ezekiel 5, 15 through 17 talks of the judgment of famine and pestilences. And we have seen pestilences in the last couple of years in the nation. We have seen famine that's beginning to take place throughout this world. And it, it began as almost like it was a scare tactic at first, but now we're seeing that there has been a shortage of a lot of things throughout the world. There's no baby formula. Can I just add there that, that, that baby formula is, 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 seems to be scarce right now, but it's kind of coincidental that that happens along the same time that they're trying to take keep abortion legal in this nation. Let me tell you, friend, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to get conspiracy theorists on you because I know what I'll be called by saying a lot of these things, but, but I, I, it doesn't really matter to me anymore. But let me tell you, friend, there are no more coincidences. God's hand is either moving in wrath at some point, and then sometimes there's other people that are orchestrating things that are happening around the world. You don't have to believe that, but it's time for everybody to wake up. The UN is saying that we will have cereal and corn shortages throughout the world in 2023. There's an avian flu going around. COVID seems to be picking, out, picking up in other countries if you believe what they're telling you on the news. I didn't come to discourage you today. Hopefully by the end of this message I'll encourage you, but sometimes I've got to tell you the bad news before we get to the good news. Let's get back to Ezekiel. As I'm looking at Ezekiel and his story, I see a lot of similarities between Ezekiel and, and John the Revelator. Because Ezekiel 1, he sees a vision while he's a prisoner. God gives him a vision of the throne of God and the four living creatures around the throne. In Revelation 4, John, while he was on the island of Patmos as a prisoner, he begins to see a vision of the four creatures around the throne, and he sees the throne of God. Ezekiel, when he saw the glory of God, he says, he says and when I saw it, I fell upon my face. In Revelation 1 and 17, John fell at Jesus' feet as dead when he was in his presence. Ezekiel falls on his face before the Lord and humbles himself before the glory of God. In Ezekiel chapter 3, just, just those two verses after we stop at the end of chapter 2, it says, Moreover, God said to me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I open my mouth and he calls me to eat that roll. There wasn't a lot of good news in the scroll. Verse 10 said there was lamentations, which is grief and sorrow and weeping, mourning and woe. Revelations 10, John took the book and ate it up, sweet as honey in his mouth, but bitter to his stomach. This is okay if I teach you for a little bit? Yeah. Amen. Why did I take time to tell you all that? Because I believe the word of the Lord in these last days is the same as it was in Ezekiel. I believe God is getting his church ready. You might disagree with me, but I believe that we're living in the last days. I know preachers have been saying that for 2,000 years. I believe God keeps us thinking that. So we'll continue to serve him and we'll keep following him. We'll keep going after him. But there are things that are happening in this day and this time that are happening at a more rapid pace. I know some of these things have happened throughout uh, throughout the history of this world. But, but some of these things are happening at more of a rapid pace than ever before. And we're seeing so many different things that are happening at one time. It leads me to believe that Jesus is coming back. It leads me to believe that we need to look up for our redemption. Draw us nigh. It leads me to believe that his people need to watch and pray. That his people need to anticipate his coming. But in that anticipation of his coming, it doesn't mean that we step back. It doesn't mean that we take a seat and just wait. It means that we keep being about the Father's business. It means that we are more about the Father's business now than we ever have been before. Because we know He's coming back. And I have friends, I have family members that need Jesus. And I don't want to see them lost. I want the, for them to come to a 
the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want them to be able to sing of the goodness of God. I want them to be able to know the faithfulness of God. I want them to be able to experience the peace of God in their lives like I have. I want them to know a God of grace and not of just wrath. I want them to know a God of mercy. I want them to know my Jesus. Because I believe he's coming back soon. Yes. <clears throat> it's time to hear the words of the Lord. It's time to take the words of the Lord and proclaim it. Now let me tell you, there's going to be some things that aren't going to be pleasant. There's going to be some words that we have to share that aren't going to be pleasant. We can't let God speak to us and then pick and choose what we're going to speak to them. We have to speak whatever God tells us to speak. We can't pick and choose because His words bring life, but our words do not. Ezekiel was charged to go and speak the words of God. Ezekiel was told, and I believe it was verse 7, verse 6, that it was going to be like walking in briars and thorns. It was like dwelling among scorpions. In other words, he was telling you, Ezekiel, I'm going to tell you straight up, you're going to go, you're going to speak my word, and it's going to be like you're attacked from the moment you open your mouth. Because they're not going to want to hear. A lot of them aren't going to hear what you have to say. And a lot of times that stops the church from doing the will of God because we're scared of what other people are going to think. I've gotten to the point in my life, I don't care what anybody thinks. I really, honestly, don't care what you think. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to teach the word of God. I hope you didn't get offended by that. But if you did, I'm just telling you, I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to teach the word of God. And I'm going to proclaim the word of God and hope people get set free. Free. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Because I can't be worried about what you think. I gotta worry about whether I'm obedient to God yes. Yes. and obedient to His call. That's right. Romans ten fourteen tells us how then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? God has called all of us to tell the word of God. Just because they use the word preacher there, don't exempt yourself. He has called all of us to share the word of God, to proclaim the word of God. One of the last things he told his disciples were to go and tell. Go and teach. God's going to give us the words to speak. Ezekiel 2, 5, And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they know that there has been a prophet among them. He repeats himself in verse 7, And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. For they are most rebellious. He said, Ezekiel, don't worry about the outcome. You worry about being obedient to me. Ezekiel, don't judge whether you did right by what you did in the sight of man. You do it by what you did in the sight of God. You, you don't judge by the results you get. You, you just be obedient to me and let me take care of the rest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because verse 5 said, They shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. God said, I'm going to be merciful enough to send a man of God to give them the word. I'm going to be merciful enough to send somebody on their workplace. I'm going to be merciful enough to send someone to their schools. I'm going to be merciful enough to send someone to their homes. I'm going to be merciful enough to have someone stop them in the middle of the marketplace and share the word of God with them. I'm going to be merciful enough to send someone to make sure they know the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then it's up to them to either accept it or reject it. We must be about the Father's business. Our stance on the issues that are going on in this world are not going to be popular. And the world in the last couple of years has made that evident. But we must walk in the calling that God has given us. Ezekiel 3.18, 
When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood, listen to this, his blood will I require at thine hand. He said, if I told you to go speak the word, I know, this is tough. This is tough this morning. Because we want to think, well, I, I just don't feel, Pastor, I just don't have the courage. Pastor, I just don't, I don't, I don't know if I can do that. But if God's speaking you to do that shows me right away that God's already speaking to you. You just decided you're not going to do it. But God, God, if God is speaking to you to speak the word, and you are not speaking the word to the people around you, he tells us he's no respecter of person. So what he said in Ezekiel, he means for us too. He said, his blood will I require at thine hand. We have a responsibility, church, not just to stay away from the sins that we keep preaching and teaching from our pulpits, but what sin is disobedience to God as well. For not doing what's right when God tells us to, that is sin as well. Ezekiel 3.21 said, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. We cannot back down from the agenda of this world. We cannot back down for the, from the intimidation of this world. We cannot cower in the midst of what seems popular in this world today. But we must proclaim the word of God. We must take a stand, church. Before we can speak, we must stand. God speaks to him in verse 1 of chapter 2 and says, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. God wanted to speak a word to Ezekiel, but he needed him to stand up first. Some of y'all have been waiting for God to speak to you, but you haven't moved yet. God's waiting for you to move and then he'll speak to you. Sometimes God wants you to open your mouth and then he'll, that's scary. Sometimes God wants you, He's not saying, hey, He's not going to give you all the words first and then you go. Sometimes God wants you to open your mouth first and then He's going to give you the words. That's scary. Because you're already stepping out in it. Sometimes God says, I want you to make the move first and then I'm going to help you once you get there. Sometimes He says, I want you to pick the phone up and dial the number first and then as they answer, I'm going to give you the words. We don't like to live like that. Especially if you don't like surprises. <laughs> but God said, look, if you'll just do and be obedient to me, then I'm going to help you along the way to do what I've called you to do. Sometimes he'll give you what to say in advance. Sometimes he just needs you to stand up first. Right. It's time to stand in attention before a God who wants to speak to us. Can I just say, we've been too busy, busy for too long. There's a work for the church to do. One of the biggest complaints we have about why people don't do anything for the, for the kingdom of God. I'm not telling you to do anything for this church. I wish you would. I wish, and I, I'm not saying, I didn't mean that ugly. That's not ugly. I, 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 wish you, I, I wish you would find out where God's place is for you in this church and do what God has called you to do. I, we, we, we're open to that. We want you to do that. But first, you've got to find your place for the kingdom of God. And you've got to work for the kingdom of God. And you've got to do what God has called you to do. But God, but sometimes the biggest excuse that people give, I, I, I've seen this, well, I would do this, but i got this going on, and i got that going on, and I'm just too busy. I found that we're too busy to do the things we really don't want to do. We find time to do the things we want to do. Oh, yeah. Amen. We'll make sacrifices for the things we want to do. Amen. We'll take time off of work to do the things we want to do. But when it comes to the kingdom, we're too busy. Yeah. You're not fooling anybody but God. Now, I don't know. I don't know if any of y'all doing that. I'm just saying that you, she fits, right? God is calling us for a work. It's time to stand 
to attention and hear what he's calling and what he's speaking to us. We must be in position to hear from him. But it's also time to stand up against the enemy's attacks. We can't afford to sit by and allow the things of this world to continue without putting up a fight. We can bask in his presence as Ezekiel did. We can experience the power of God in our services. And I pray that we do. And we have. And I pray that we continue to do that. I pray that we continue to feel the power of God and the presence of God in our services. But that is never, never, you hear me, that is never where it should end. There comes a time when the church must take a stand outside these walls. And the time is now. There's too many in the church today that have let the pressures of life knock them off their feet. It's time to get back up. It's time to stand up again. There may be some that say, I don't have the strength spiritually. I don't know if I have the boldness to take a stand in this world. It's okay, because I don't think Ezekiel did either. That's why it says in verse 2 that the Spirit entered me when He spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Ezekiel couldn't even have gotten back up off the floor if it wasn't for the Spirit of God to move in him. Ezekiel needed the Spirit of God inside of him to reach those other people and to proclaim the Word of God. And God understood before I do anything else, He's going to need my Spirit. Before I do anything else, my Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, needs to come inside of Him and fill Him to the overflow and allow Him to have the strength to do what He needs to do for me. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us of the gifts of the Spirit. It says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work of that one and the self same Spirit. Dividing to every man separately as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. We are the body of Christ. But if we're going to function as the body of Christ, we have to be filled with the same Spirit that Christ was filled with. We have to be filled with the unction of the Holy Ghost. We have to be filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, so that we can do the work of God. We can no longer sit in our pews and depend on our gifts, but the gifts that come from the Spirit. You might feel like you have these gifts, but I'm going to tell you, you don't have the gifts of God like He wants you to have them until you're filled with His Spirit. God wants to give you more than what you might have right now. If you're filled with the Spirit already, if you've been baptized by His Holy Ghost, if you've been filled with His Spirit, thank God that the power of God lives in you. But don't let it stay inside of you. Let it work in you. And let it work through you. Let Him work through you. Let Him do the work in you so that you can do the work of God and the call of God in your life. It's scary to know that a God that created the whole universe, I just tell you, it's scary to think that the God of the universe has called me to do a work for Him. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary to sit there and listen to the children sing so beautifully and know that it's my turn next. It's scary to know that I'm sitting there getting ready to do what God has given me and called me to do. But it's a joy at the same time. It's scary because I don't want to mess it up. It's scary because I need His Spirit if I'm going to do anything. God has gifted me with the ability to teach. God has gifted me with the ability to preach. But lives will not be changed because I have a gift. Lives will be changed by the Spirit of God. Lives will be changed by the Holy Spirit 
working through me. And I don't do want any glory for that because it, I don't get any glory. It's all His because it's the Spirit of God working through me. And I just tell you that to tell you this. You can't do it on your own. You can't change lives on your own. You can't save a soul. But you can tell them about one who can. And you can be led by the Spirit of God. And you can be led by His Holy Ghost to move in the lives of people so that people's lives will be changed. It's time for the church to stand up. It's time for the church to do the work of God. We must be filled with the Spirit of God. Joel 2 told us of a time where we're going to have to be filled with the Spirit of God. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. Oh, if you think you're not worthy. If you think you're just a lowly servant. And God could care less about filling you with His Holy Ghost. You could not be more wrong. He said, even upon the servants and the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. And I will show wonders in the heaven and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Look up tonight. The moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered as the Lord has said. And in the remnant who the Lord shall call. He's going to pour out His Spirit. Now in the last days He promised us there would be a spirit of Antichrist upon this world. And we can see that as I told you before. You can see all the things that are happening across this world. That's the bad news. The spirit of the Antichrist is all over this world and is wreaking havoc all over this world. And the spirit of Antichrist is after your children. The spirit of grace. If you look and see what's going on in this world, there's more attacks against children and teenagers than any other group around this world. They're trying to choke the life, the spiritual life out of them before they even know how to breathe. They're trying to kill our babies before they come out of the womb. They're trying to manipulate our minds. And they're doing everything they can to do it. That's the bad news. But the good news is, He said that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. He didn't leave you old men and women out either. He said, the old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all my people. They're going to be able to see things they've never seen before. They're going to be able to see signs and wonders they've never seen before. They're going to see miracles in the churches. He said in his last days, God's going to pour his spirit on all flesh if I'm right. If we're really living in the last of the last days and Jesus is coming back soon. He desires nothing else but to pour His Spirit out on His people and allow the Holy Ghost to work in and through you. He's just looking for some people who are willing to stand up if He will do that. He's looking for some people who are willing to operate under His power and under His Holy Ghost. Would you stand with me if that's you in this house today? The Spirit of God wants to move in this place today. The world doesn't need any more arguments. They don't need more programs. The world needs a church that is filled with the Spirit of God. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but one's coming after me that is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I pray the fire of God will flow in this place. I pray the fire of God will move in this place. I pray, would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, pour your spirit out in this place. Pour your spirit out on your people, Lord. Lord, as we take a stand for you, Lord, pour your spirit out. Lord, if we really want God to move in us, Lord, may we let your spirit flow in us. Move in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, move in this place, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit. God, if there be any here today.
today they have never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. May they receive your gift today. Lord, if there's any here today that say, I need another touch from God today. I need God to move in my life. Father, would you, would you help us? Would you see your spirit to move in them once again? Get fill them once again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. May a fresh wind fill this place, Lord. In the name of Jesus. May the fire of your Holy Ghost fill this place. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus said he would send another comforter. Jesus said he would send a helper for you. That you could do the work that he's called you to do. Jesus said, I want you to show these disciples. I want you to go tarry in Jerusalem. And I want you to wait until this other comforter comes. I want you to wait until you're filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Friend, I pray that you believe that today is the word of God. He said he would do that. And if he'll do that for them, he'll do it for you. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Well, don't be scared. Don't be worried. If you know Jesus, that's what he wants for you. It's a gift for you. He said he might he'll do that. And he said you'll speak with other tongues. You won't have to trouble over your mouth anymore. But isn't that what you want? You speak the things that God wants you to do. You speak the things that God tells you to do. You'll no longer be afraid. You'll have the power of God inside of you to do the work of God. If you're in this place this morning and you said, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. I've never been baptized with the Holy Ghost. But I want to be, I want to do everything I can for the kingdom of God. And I want him to fill me today. I want him to baptize me today. I want to, I want to be filled to the overflow. I want all God has for me. And I 